Good evening. I'd like to call to order the virtual Lakewood City Council meeting, Lakewood, Colorado, of January 11th, 2021. For those tuning in tonight, our uh, public comment line is 253-215-8782. Webinar ID is 953-1566. Five six five nine. Uh, you'll press pound after entering the webinar ID and then pound once more to join the meeting. You press star nine to request to speak and then star six to unmute. There'll be opportunities for public comment under general public comment, as well as uh, resolutions on the consent agenda and second reading ordinances. So with that, Mr. Rome, our clerk, will you please read the roll? Paul. Here. Abel. Here. Vincent. Here. Gutwine. Gutwine, sorry, we didn't hear you. Still don't hear you, but I see you're here. Uh, Bita. Here. Skilling. Here. Springsteen. Here. Franks. Here. Johnson. I am here. Labure. Here. Harrison. Here. And we have a quorum. Great. Thank you, sir. Okay. <clears throat> so um, we're going to go and move into the Pledge of Allegiance. And um, we're going to have an extended moment of silence this evening and like to honor a couple folks. One is our former Lakewood Police Chief, Ron Burns, who passed away. And so we want to certainly have the opportunity to honor him. An incredible man, and Miss Hodson will weigh in a little bit more in her report. And then also, Officer Brian Sicknick, who lost his life at the Capitol this week. And certainly, our country has seen a lot of upheaval, not only this last week, but throughout all of 2020, and unfortunately, moving into 2021. So, this is a great opportunity for us just to take a moment to reflect in any which way that we do or however we do that. And, and remember those special folks and remember that we are a, a wonderful nation, a great nation. And as evident by the folks that came back to work that night, the institutions are greater than the people and those will go on. So with that, will you please join me in the pledge? And again, we'll remain silent. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the United the States, States of America. Of America. And, and to, to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, which it stands one nation, nation under God, God into this invisible world, with liberty and justice and for all. Thank you very much. So as we move forward, just a, a couple of things I wanted to signal out to uh, the community on the agenda as has become uh, kind of the norm. Unfortunately, we do have a motion to extend the emergency declaration. So we will move that up um, to just after the executive report. And then when we do get to the consent agenda, Councillor Johnson has requested to move item 11 which has to do with well it's just first reading but it's the westland town center parking lot uh, we'll be removing that to general business and so um, when we get to that she will make that and then has an explanation um, under general business as to why so mr clerk could you please read item four Item number four, resolution 2021-2, appointing the mayor pro tem of the city council of the city of Lakewood. Okay, so um, this is an, a yearly thing that we do and nominations can come from the floor. And I do have Councillor Franks' hand up, so I will go to Councillor Franks. Thanks, Mayor Paul, appreciate it. Well, first, I wanted to take the opportunity to thank those who have served as Mayor Pro Tem in the past. 
Um, this council, especially since I've been on council, we've created more committees and commissions and the, the, the amount of work that uh, we all do has certainly, in my view, increased. And so I certainly wanted to acknowledge that uh, it's for those who take this role on, it is another um, uh, duty. And uh, so I certainly appreciate that. Um, this year, I do want to, again, uh, nominate uh, Councillor Dave Skilling for Mayor Pro Tem. I do believe he has a uh, head and shoulders led above um, as far as uh, executing the duties, mm -hmm. um, ensuring uh, good uh, communications and uh, uh, that good processes are followed. So I am honored to nominate uh, Councillor Dave Skilling from the floor. Thanks. Thank you. So there's a motion. Is there a second? I second that motion. Okay. Second from Councillor Harrison. A motion is second. And if you could please mute yourselves, I don't have that ability other than to mute myself. Um, so there's a motion and a second. So uh, um, Councillors Bita and Johnson, your hands are up. Uh, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, I would. Okay. <clears throat> Councillor Johnson. Thank you. Well, first off, I couldn't agree more with Councillor Franks. I think that Councillor Skilling has done a very fine job being the mayor pro tem and executing that uh, it, all of his responsibilities extremely well. It is a position that you learn a lot of leadership through serving in that. Um, I would just like to say a few comments about things and Councillor Skilling understands where I'm coming from. So this is not new information to him. We have three councillors on this uh, council who are termed out in three years. This position is the type of position that everybody should have an opportunity to serve in and to learn how to be a leader, to take those skills back into your community. This, um, if this motion goes through, and it likely will, uh, this will give us, and I, and frankly, this is not something that I get into because um, it's just not my style. But um, we will have had four male pro tems, mayor pro tems. We have um, an equal amount of, of female counselors. And the counselors who uh, are going to be termed out in three years are females. If they do not have an opportunity, the three of them, to start to cycle in this position, they are not going to have the opportunity to learn this and, and to fulfill that leadership role. Um, I, on a personal level, um, I have to question, to be honest with you, having a mayor pro tem who is in, uh, going to be running for office in the same year. Um, the public perception is not good. Um, I think that it's something that has come up in some of the meetings regarding Mayor Pro Tem. I don't think there was ever any kind of a decision made for that. But um, this position was never designed to catapult somebody politically. It, um, it was to be the side person for the mayor to be there when the mayor could not be, and also to learn leadership skills. Um, when I was reading through the agenda tonight, um, there were a few things that kind of stood out, and it's part of the language of the charter. The term is for one year. Um, you are selected for a term, and the charter does not offer alternatives. So um, I think that as we go forward with this, we really need to, as a council, uh, pay attention to some of the things that we are deciding and doing. 
Um, again, I think that Counselor Skilling has done a, a very fine job, and this is not about him personally. Um, and I've reached out to him. He knows how I feel. Thank you. Thank you, Counselor. And I would just ask when you're done, uh, please lower, yep, thank you. Please lower your hands, because I do not have that ability either. Uh, Counselor Bita? Thank you, Mayor. Am I coming through okay? Loud and clear. Good, thank you. Um, I agree with uh, my co-counselor Johnson on this. Um, I do think, first of all, I wanna thank Council Skilling for what the job he has done in the last year. He's, he's put in some extraordinary effort and I know some extraordinary time in uh, his duties as mayor pro tem. And uh, I think he's done a great job and I really appreciate it. And I know we all do, <clears throat> but I have to also agree that this is a position that should be um rotated around with other counselors um uh, it's a leadership position it's not just an assistant where you you know, just kind of show up if the mayor can't make it i i don't see it that way at all in fact i see it as a you know it's it's an appointment by this council uh the mayor is elected by the people but right mayor pro tem is appointed by this council and they're kind of a representative of all of us and i see it as a standalone position where uh, they should be able to and, and should use it as a, as a, um, you know, as a way to uh, get out in the community and and uh, find out what what our community needs and uh, talk to them about what's going on with council and and being being sort of an ambassador for for our council and um, you know it's a it's a standalone they don't have to defer to anybody or ask for permission so uh, it's a leadership position. I think it's important for it to, for us to see some diversity in that position, so that uh, you know different points of view, different backgrounds, are represented in that leadership position. Um, we've had been fortunate since I've been on council. We've had uh, th uh, three very good um, mayor pro tems in the last, and this, uh, in, in, and now it'll be the fourth year if if we have another. Uh, male or another man on, on mayor pro tem and I do think it's time for one of our um, one of my women colleagues they, they have I have seen uh, my colleagues grow so much since I've been on council in their leadership abilities in their uh, maturity in their um, in their approach to the issues and and um, I I just think that we need we need one of them now to step up if, if it's at all possible and <clears throat> take on this position. And I and I note that we are in contentious times. We all know that, and I'm not gonna get into all that, but because we're in those kinds of times, it's even more important for us to have a, a leadership at the highest level that has a, a calming effect, that has a conciliatory uh, approach and effect to keep keep uh, you know keep us moving in the right direction, keep the acrimony down, and keep the you know all of the the uh, friction that is bound to occur in a council like ours to keep that to a minimum and show our constituents that um, you know we're there to serve them first and foremost. So I would really like to to see one of our one of our uh, ladies step up on this and I would be more than willing to support them. Thank you. Okay, so just a reminder, we have a motion a second, so we get folks to speak to the motion, please. Councilor LeBear. Well, I was just gonna echo the same things that Councilor Bita and Councilor Johnson said. I think uh, Councilor Skilling has done an excellent job. I think he's uh, a great leader. He's taken a lot of arrows, a lot of hits. Uh, for uh, playing a very important leadership role, I think, in the last year. And he's done a, a fantastic job and I thank him for all that he's done. But I just wanted to echo that I agree a lot with what Councilor Vita and Johnson have said. It'd be great to have uh, some women leadership as well. I was happy to support Councilor Gutwine a few years ago and I was happy to support Councilor Vincent last year. And I hope, um, you know, if I, neither one of them are running this time, I hope that next year we'll see them running for the position. So thanks for everybody on this council for all that everyone does. And uh, 
and thanks for uh, scaling for for stepping up again this year. Thank you. So I, I would just speak to the motion and as somebody that has had the opportunity to work a lot this year with Mayor Pro Tem skilling it certainly has been something that's been very uh, helpful. And when I heard a lot of folks describe what you look for in a Mayor Pro Tem, you absolutely nailed what Councillor Skilling, Mayor Pro Tem Skilling has brought to the table. And the heavy lift throughout the year and you know, not only being Mayor Pro Tem, but being the head of development dialogue and taking on some of the most challenging conversations this council has had and been able to bring some sorts of cohesion and a willingness for folks to come together. So I'm certainly willing to support um, the Mayor Pro Tem going forward. It's tough because I do have friends uh, on this group that I've nominated in the past and who are just as capable and went through a really ugly conversation. And so I'm glad to see some folks willing to say that these folks are worthy because they are worthy and there's a lot of worthy people on this group. And so, uh, you know, there wasn't a lot of opportunity to stand in because we've been closed down and there weren't events, but it's more than just events. And it's it's folks that are willing to, to get in there and really put the time and energy in. And so I am grateful for the service and I hope that this does pass going forward and would uh, be better for another year with you in this role. Councillor Harrison. Um, thank you. Uh, I would echo what everybody else has said, Dave. I think that you've done a tremendous job, but I'm going to put you on the spot and I'm going to ask you to um, think about a couple of things. Um, you know what kind of weight pro tem position has. You also know what kind of weight you carry with the development dialogue. If, and I'm not going to put you on the spot about running again, but um, if you're going to add that one to your load for 2021, that's going to be a really big load that you're carrying. I want you to really think about that. And I don't, it's not that I don't believe that you can't do it because I think you can, but that's really stretching your free hours pretty thin. And I know you're a, um, you know, your family is very important to you. So um, can I give you that thought and let you think about it for a moment? Um, and then maybe I'd like to hear from you. Why do you want to stick your hand in the meat grinder again? So. Okay, so there is a motion in a second. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, your hand is up, so please. I was asked, so I, I'm not going to ever be shy. You know me to be the shy type and all. Um, so leading up to this, um, you know, I, I think we've accomplished a lot of what we were hoping to accomplish when I had first run for Pro Tem last year. And I've never viewed this as the um, stand-in role. That's never been... I've never actually viewed it as the backup mayor because I know that um, Adam is there a lot and does a lot of his events and he enjoys them. I think I've only, even pre-virus, I think I had done maybe one event or something. Um, but I think most of what it is is uh, the behind the scenes collaboration that we've tried to have and trying to reach out to every counselor. I think I have good relationships with everybody. And we've gone through some difficult periods. And yes, I have taken a lot of arrows on that. But I think without going through that, I think it may have been worse in some respects is, is a lot of what we're trying to do is head off the problems before they arise, see where people's consternation is and address it. And I talk to everybody a lot. Um, I understand the workload uh, I, and I appreciate that. Um, and it, and it is a lot of work. Uh, but a lot of what I do and, and still trying to do as far as bringing everybody together and working better as a group together, um, I don't really wanna do this job as even a city councilor. If you dread coming into a meeting um, and if everybody is, you know, 
taking sides, whatever it is. You know, we've had some issues in the past and that's not fun for everybody. We've all sat here and said that, that, hey, we need to change, we need to get better. And I think we're on that trajectory to get better. So yeah, some of it is a selfishness in that I want to be a, a big reason of why we get along better and why we move forward. And that makes my job more enjoyable coming to this job if that makes any sense. It may not, um, but it's more of just trying to continue on the same. So and I appreciate what everybody uh, has said, and I appreciate that folks have supported me through the past year. Um, hopefully this January will be easier than last January because I would really like to uh, move on from last January. But that's all I have. Great. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bita. Uh, just one thing, Mayor. Um, are you going to ask if there are any other nominations? Uh, no, because this was the motion and the second was for Mayor Pro Tem Skilling at this point. But, but Mr. Mayor, isn't that just tantamount to a nomination of him for the position? And normally the process we follow would be we would take any other nominations that would may want to run for the position. Well, we certainly will. We certainly would if this, if this fails. Well, then as I, I'm questioning whether this is a proper procedure for the appointment of, a, of our uh, mayor pro tem. It seems to me it ought to be a nomination and a vote, not a not a motion. Well, that's that's what we're doing is a nomination and a vote well and what i'm saying is i'm not sure that's the the right procedure for doing that um because then it precludes anyone else from being uh given an opportunity to put their hat in the ring and i'm not sure this is the right procedure so i i, I think this is point of order i think this is the wrong procedure i think the uh the motion should be withdrawn and we should go to the normal process which is nom nominations as opposed to a motion well I, I think at the same thing that if the, i mean this this is how we've done it in the past and so the nomination would be the same thing if this not if somebody was nominated and it failed then we'd go on to the next person so either way we have to take a vote as to the person who's been nom uh, nominated with a motion and a second but Mr. Mayor, the, the, the thing is with a nomination, then you open the nominations and you uh, allow anyone else who is also wants to nominate someone. So you have you may have more than one candidate and then you vote on the candidates, you know, candidate one, candidate two. That's the way it's always done. This idea of a motion, what it does is it precludes anybody else from throwing their hat in the ring. It, it closes, slams the door. And I, I, I'm opposed to that. I think the, the uh, procedure is wrong and I would challenge it. Okay. Well, I appreciate that feedback and barring other ways of how we've done this in the past, I don't have an idea of how to go about undoing this. We do have a motion in a second on the floor and it was legally done via our processes. So um uh mayor pro tem go ahead i think that uh probably to address uh councillor beta's point you would just have um whatever nominations uh happen up front and then that way you know um who you're so if if there were three folks that were being nominated and your candidate comes up, you would vote for them. And obviously you would vote against a candidate that was up. So I think the point would be, okay, here's, here's your universe of nominations. Um, here are the people that are involved. So you know that you're voting for candidate one or candidate two. So if you don't vote for candidate one, you're going to vote for candidate two. So I, I think that's fair to do it that way. I think that's an appropriate way, especially based on the conversations that we're hearing just if there are other nominations that, that folks won't accept, let's do that and then we can just go through it however you'd like. I'll withdraw my second. So, Councillor Franks, you are the motion making your hands up. 
Well, what I wanted to say is I didn't know if we uh, could just, if there was someone else who wanted to as part of the discussion could certainly, um, I just hadn't heard from anyone else that was, um, you know, we've had this open for weeks. Um, no one else has contacted me to, uh, so I guess, you know, certainly if someone wants to uh, announce uh, that, but I still think that since we had the motion in the second, I'm not withdrawing my motion, but certainly if someone wants to raise their hand and say that they're, you know, certainly to make themselves known, but again, this has been known for weeks and no one's reached out to me to say that they were interested, so I didn't have the benefit of, of that consideration, but certainly um, I would like to keep my uh, motion or my nomination motion on the table but all right so now i'm in a robert's rules dilemma so i'm going to have to um refer to mr graham so we had a motion and a second and the second was withdrawn and the original motion maker does not want to withdraw the original motion so in a situation like this you would ask for a second again and see if you get another second. Okay. So the original motion maker was <laughs> uh, Councilor Franks. And is there a second to her original motion of nominating Councilor Skilling for Mayor Pro Tem? And so I would second that. I would. Okay. So it looks like Councilor Vincent was going to second that as well. Okay, so there is a motion in a second. Now, if there's anybody, so this is going a little bit outside the realm because this is speaking against, this is something beyond the motion that is on the table. But for um, the openness of this council, is there somebody else who would like to be considered for this role? And if so, do they accept that? Councillor Johnson, your hand is up. Thank you. I would like to nominate Councillor Gutwein. She had wanted to be in this position a year or two ago, and it didn't work out. She has grown a great deal. I think being mayor pro tem at this time would help her with her leadership ability. And again, we have three women, and I really don't like to get into this as being a, a male-female issue, but we have three... Yep. Counselors so I, on here. No, I'm talking. No, I, I'm going to limit the discussion on it because there is a motion in a second. You did nominate Councillor Gutwein, and that's fine. I don't, we will have to do with the original motion. I'm giving a little bit of leeway. So I'm not going to go into all of this right now with the motion in a second. There was a second nomination, and that was for Councillor Gutwein, and that is up to her to accept that or not. Well, I would second the nomination. It wasn't well, that, a nomination. That you can't second that. Sorry. Well, wait. There was a nomination made. How, how, it requires a second. You just took well, a second on the. No, you, you just took a second on the other nomination. Why isn't it appropriate here? Because the second was done on the original motion, which is the which is the dominating motion that is on the floor. Technically, there should be no talk other than just this, but because the motion maker said that she'd be welcome to hear if anybody else would be willing to do this, I allowed for somebody else to ask. Not, this isn't a nomination, this is simply to say so that when this vote takes place on the motion and the second on Councilor Skilling, people have an idea that somebody else would like to run. Now, clearly this wasn't the cleanest of processes, but this is what we're left with and this is the cleanest that we can get through. So, Councillor Gutwein, I know that kind of puts you on the spot, and if you're not prepared to answer, I do, <laughs> I do. I do have our motion maker's hand up too. If you need okay, to, okay, I'll, I'll wait. Okay, and then I'll speak afterwards. Thank you, Councillor Franks. Okay, never mind. We'll lower that. I'm fine. I was just wanting to know if she was going to accept the not. That way, it was clear for everyone. Thanks. Thank you, and that's what we're going to get to. Um, I, I just really, really want to thank uh, Councillor Johnson and Councillor Bita for 
nominating me. Um, I think that, honestly, I think that really says a lot. Um, just given all of our background and all of our history and um, I really, in my heart, agree with you about um, just giving folks a shot and it also gives our um, our communities that we represent and our different communities that we represent um, you know it, it elevates their position as well um, and I so I would that means so much to me um, that you would nominate me I am what I would really love is to see us have a, an opportunity to unanimously support someone. Um, and I don't think that we're going to get, get to that place. Um, that's unfortunate. And I, I had not reached out to, as Councillor Franks mentioned, um, I had not intended to run for mayor pro tem this year um and so i think that at this time um i will not accept the nomination um and i hope that moving forward we will be able to elevate the female leaders and give other people a chance thank you for your support and um that this is a really difficult really difficult situation so thank you okay Thank you. All right, so I do not see any more hands up and don't see any more folks with nominations. I'm gonna to try to just go as slow as I can to make sure that I don't miss anything. Uh, Councillor Abel, your hand is up. Uh, yes, I don't have a nomination. I do have a comment. Councillor Gutwein just showed a great deal of class and certainly would deserve the recognition for that, if nothing else. Uh, I think she's matured into the role, but uh, I support Councillor Skilling. Thank you. And thank you, Ms. Gutwein, for being so gracious. Great. Okay. A motion and a second. And this, the, the motion on the floor is the original one for Councillor Skilling to serve as Mayor Pro Tem. So please cast your votes. Councillor Springsteen, I can't see your vote. Okay, and that passes 10 ayes and zero nays. Is that correct? The nay being Councillor Johnson. Okay. All right. Next up, we have public comment. This is the point in the meeting where the public is invited to address the City Council on items that do not appear on the agenda. All comments should be directed to the city council, I ask that all persons calling in observe the same decorum of a city council meeting held in person. Your participation code or call in tonight is 1-253-215-8782 with the web ID 953-1566-5659. You'll press pound after that and then pound once more to join the meeting. Star nine to request to speak star six to unmute again this is general public comment three minutes if you give us your name and address 
and I will give you a 30 second warning. And um, sounds like I've had some feedback too that maybe a 10 second is helpful for folks as well. So I'll go ahead and do that. Mr. Clerk, do we have anybody for general public comment? Yes, we have a uh, phone number ending 0323. All right. Good evening. Caller ending in 0323. If you please give us your name and address or name and ward, we'll start your three minutes. If you need to press star six to unmute, that'll unmute you. Caller ending in 0323, we see you. So you're in the meeting. So if you press star six, you can unmute and we'll begin your time. Council. Good evening. This is James Mace, Go ahead. Um, first off, I have a question for one of the council members. And, Mayor, I would like to answer, ask that question. Please. Um, Councilor Charlie Abel, did you get my message this afternoon that I left you? So, Mr. Mace, please continue your comments and, and we can come back after public comment, please. Okay. My comment is also, Mayor, everything that uh, Count Councilor Springsteen has told you guys. Everything that Councilor Springsteen's told you guys about our. Um, our fire department is true. I have literally seen them giving out the the GHB drug on um which is the date rape drug and I have literally seen it happen face to face. If you guys don't want to do an investigation on this, I will. And there's my comments for this evening. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Mace, thank you very much, sir. All right, Mr. Mr. Rome, do we have anybody else signed up for public comment? No, Mayor, we do not. Okay. All right. Councilor Abel, do you want to address that quick um, question for Mr. Mace? I do. Mr. Mace, I did not get your message this afternoon. Was it email, uh, telephone? If so, which telephone? And I would like to apologize that I didn't get it, but this has been a very busy day for all of us. So, uh, Please give me a call tomorrow morning or when this is over tonight, at whatever time it is, I'll be happy to address your uh, concerns. Thank, Thank you, Councilor. He's not on the line anymore, so hopefully... He's probably listening, though. Yep. yep. Hopefully you heard that, Mr. May, so please reach back out to Councilor Abel. All right. Next up, we have the executive report, Ms. Hodson. Yes, thank you. Good evening. Um, let me start with some kind of easy and then I've got some more in-depth information. First of all, your new city attorney, um, Allison McKinney Brown, her start date is next Tuesday. So it's January 19th. Um, remember, you don't have a council meeting next Monday. Um, so you'll get to meet her in person at the following council meeting. So I look forward to that. So you have been in the conversations regarding the porch light project, and you know that porch light, remember um, DA Pete Weir came and spoke to city council, probably, gosh, I think it was even before COVID, was it? 
because I think he and his team came in person. Well, there have been a lot of hurdles um, for them setting up the facility at 8th and Quail. And some of those hurdles were issues with water pipe and construction delays, et cetera. But I'm excited to announce that currently furniture is being moved in um, and the IT equipment is being installed. And it looks like it looks like we hope that we're gonna be able to open to the public starting February 8th, which is really good news for our families who are dealing with um, just stressful situations. As you know, operations are limited initially due to COVID, um, but opening the doors is a, is a, big, um, a big event for us. And we're excited that we're gonna be able to help the victims of domestic violence in our community. So that's a, oh, deep exhale. Um, also, I sent you an email from the Jefferson County Communications team, and I wanted to mention this. They have started something called Notify Me, and this will be important for your constituents to know about. Um, if you're like me, you hear questions um, constantly about COVID-19 and the cases and how do I get vaccinated and where do I get it and what are what are those um, hierarchy of rules. So it looks like they're setting up a system that you will be notified if you signed up, sign up for notification. So it's the COVID-19 section of jeffco.us website. You'll be able to find it. And if you don't go, if, if you're having any trouble, go to lakewood.org and our coronavirus um, area, and you'll be able to link directly to the Jeffco site. So more information should be forthcoming, but I think that's really good news. We have, as you might remember, if you've been around a while, we have a hazard mitigation plan that needs to be updated every five years. And here we are, we're there again. So the hazard mitigation plan is currently being updated in Jefferson County. The plan identifies hazards that the city is susceptible to and mitigation actions that'll reduce that risk and the loss associated with such. The plan is updated every five years, uh, first approved by FEMA, and then it comes to city council for approval. And we're estimating that that'll happen around July of 2021. 2021, can you believe that? Um, you know, public input and information and participation is critical for this process. So there will be, it, the first public meeting is coming up, it's January 14th, and there's a survey involved to start to really engage citizens about this whole process. So you'll be getting an email from Jesse Miller, who you've met before, he's our emergency manager, and he'll do a follow-up with more detail, but I just wanted to give the heads up on the hazard mitigation plan that's underway. And finally, on the lighter side, I was really excited to hear this, and I think you will too. Because our community and our whole region the citizens just adore the open spaces that, that are provided throughout this area. Um, whenever you have a lot of people who are uh, visiting the open space, it's inevitable to have conflict. And it looks like there's this, this um, consortium that's come together. It's Boulder Open Space and Mountain Parks, Colorado Parks and Wildlife, and Jefferson County Open Space they are going they're um, conducting a big research project that is let me get my glasses it's a two-year study to evaluate the effectiveness of existing trail courtesy signs and to develop messaging that based on visitor feedback and field observations is the most effective so we're going to be um a stakeholder although we're not contributing financially we're really going to watch watch um, how that process goes. So there may be some really good efforts that they are recommending that we can implement in our open spaces. So I was excited to hear that, that somebody's really looking at trail conflict and what's the best way, what are the best ways to try to kind of mitigate some of the conflict that we see on our trails. Um, okay, last week, Councillor um, LeBure talked about the Dr. Cog grant. Do you remember that? 
And uh, so I said I would talk about some details about that um, specific project. And as it relates to your last plant annual planning session, transportation was one of your um, priorities. So this really fits in. We have been granted a $10 million grant, $10 million toward a $12 million project um, for, and it's called the Colfax Safety Project from Wadsworth to Sheridan. So I've learned um, that it's really important to describe the, what the need is before you talk about what the solutions are. And I think I neglected to do that at our last meeting. So let me talk about the need. Did you know that the highest concentration of traffic related injuries and deaths in Lakewood occur on this site, in, in this area? And in the recent, in the most recent six years, we have had 312 serious injuries and eight fatalities. And this is on Colfax from Wadsworth to Sheridan. We've had pedestrians or bicyclists were 81 of the 312 serious injuries and six of the eight deaths. The pedestrian involved crashes are primarily at night and involved impaired pedestrians. And sidewalks in this area, area are generally narrow and in poor condition or absent. So those are the conditions that, that we're dealing with that it became really clear that we've got to do something about this. So we applied for this grant and I believe this is one of the largest grants ever to be awarded, and it's 10 million from Dr. Cobb. And here are the, char the key characteristics of this project. One, transform the underutilized third travel lane from Teller to Sheridan Boulevard into buffered, well-lit sidewalks. Two, add bus stop pullout pullouts adjacent to the driving lanes for faster unloading of patrons in brighter passenger waiting areas and to reduce impacts of bus stops on through lane traffic. Three, create buffers between the vehicle traffic and pedestrians to guide pedestrians to safer crossing locations. Four, utilize innovative design elements to guide pedestrians to well-lit, protected Colfax Street crossings. Five, incorporate landscaping, artistic and placemaking elements into buffers and guidance elements. Won't that be nice to have something a little nicer uh, visibly, visually, I mean, provide well-lit, safe, safer pedestrian median crossing refuge areas, add six new pedestrian signal crossing locations and one new vehicle traffic signal at Depew, eight, improve directional and informational signs for pedestrians and motorists, nine, add technology to detect pedestrians that have entered the street unlawfully and activate warning signs for the, for the motorists, and finally, improve intersections for safer turns onto West Colfax Avenue. On December 16th, 2020, um, Dr. Cog, which is Denver Regional Council of Governments, approved a $10 million grant from the Safer Main Streets Initiative. And the city's required $2 million match will most likely come from our TABOR proceeds, depends on um, how this, those come in at the end of the year. So we're really excited about that. And I wanna call out three specific departments who have worked really hard on this grant. And that is from Public Works, Matt Duncan. He's a wizard with traffic engineering. From planning, Roger Wadnell, who you all know, and he has worked for the city for very long. And finally, from the police department, Sergeant Brian Lovejoy, who's really an expert as it relates to um, traffic issues and as they intersect with police issues. So um, we also had the whole team of economic development. So that's our internal team. We work with CDOT and RTD and a whole lot of other stakeholders. And we're just delighted about this particular grant and congratulations to those folks who worked really hard to get it. Um, construction is currently anticipated to start in 2022, which I believe this, that's only next year. Okay, so thank you for letting me tell you that. Oh, 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 except we're gonna start a pretty thorough public information process for this project. And it's gonna start at the end of February or early March. So you'll hear more about this and please encourage uh, whoever, everyone in the community to participate in those conversations. I think it'll be 
really beneficial to have as many of our constituents get involved in that public information and imagine in a couple of years we'll have a much safer area um, along Colfax. So that's something that we can really look forward to. And finally, on a really sad note, as the mayor indicated, on, um, on January 2nd, we lost a really good man. And that was Ron Burns. He was a police chief. I had the pleasure of working side by side with him as a department head during that time. He came to the, to the Lakewood Police Department in 2001 and worked um, as a chief for six years. He reinforced the high standards of Lakewood Police Department's mission to serve and protect with integrity, intelligence, and initiative. He always led by example, and I know that to be true. His forward thinking and willingness to listen to the community quickly earned him the loyalty, respect, and admiration of those who worked with him. His legacy will include an uncompromising pledge to the highest standards of integrity, professionalism, outstanding leadership, and an unfailing loyalty and commitment to serving the citizens of Lakewood. He was a charismatic and a humble man. Um, and our organization was better because of him. We're really gonna miss him and, and our hearts go out to Nancy, his, his precious wife and, and his family. Um, so this is a real unfortunate loss for us as a community. And um, we wish he him well, rest in peace, Ron. So thanks, that concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Hodson. All right, so I'll now go to the emergency declaration. And uh, as we proceed with this, just a reminder to the community, we've essentially been in this phase since March. And um, as you know, things continue to change. Um, opportunities continue to arise that may need emergency action or may not. Um, what we're seeing also in other communities is, is kind of a wildfire of this uh, crazy disease that's really affecting a lot of people. So. Um, there may be more dollars that come in, there may not, but this allows us in many ways to strike fast and certainly has been used very limited or in a very limited, limited, limited capacity, but it's important to continue as the state of Colorado continues to be in a state of emergency. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mayor Pro Tem Skilling for a motion. I move to extend the declaration of disaster in the city of Lakewood, Colorado, resulting from the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic pursuant to section 1.27 of the Lakewood Municipal Code, originally declared by proclamation of the Lakewood City Manager on March 17th, 2020, extended by majority vote of the City Council on multiple occasions, and by this motion extended again until January 25th, 2021, unless earlier extended or terminated by the City Council. Second. Okay, there's a motion and second on the declaration. Any questions? All right, seeing none, please cast your votes. That passes 10 ayes and zero nays. Is that correct? Yep, 10 ayes, zero, uh, 10 ayes, one nay, sorry. One nay, the nay being Councilor Springsteen. Okay, next up is the consent agenda. Before I go to that, I also wanna mention that we did receive public comment on Lakewood Speaks. So I want to acknowledge that as well and thank the community for weighing in there. Um, the use of the consent agenda has been made to expedite council action. It contains both resolutions and first reading ordinances. Resolutions are items of a routine nature. Members of the public will have an opportunity in a moment to comment on any of the proposed resolutions. And first reading ordinances appear on the agenda only for publication and setting of second reading. Lost my script. No public comments will be heard this evening on first reading ordinances. The public will have the opportunity to comment on the proposed ordinances during the scheduled public hearings on the date set tonight by city council. Any council member may request an item on the consent agenda be removed for separate discussion and action under general business. So just a point of clarification, Mr. Rome, you are uh, learning with us as we go. Normally, I think we would read this all in and then we would poll. If it's easier to read in without polling, 
and just acknowledging I can call on Councillor Johnson to just push it to general business. I don't know. Um, we certainly welcome your feedback on that. If you have any, or if either way, we'll roll with how we normally do it. Uh, yeah, I think I should read it all in and then you motion to okay. do it, if that works for you. Great. Okay. So I ask that you please read the consent agenda into the record. Item seven, resolution 2021-3, appointing a member to the budget and audit board. Item eight, resolution 2021-4, appointing and reappointing members to the Lakewood Advisory Committee. Item nine, resolution 2021-5, designating the public place for posting notices of public meetings during 2021 pursuant to CRS 24-6-402. Item 10 is ordinance 0 2021-1 modification to official development plan to legislatively rezone land located at 2301 South McIntyre Street, Lakewood, Colorado 80465, County of Jefferson, State of Colorado. Item 11, Ordinance O-2021-2, authorizing the sale of the Westland Town Center parking lot in accordance with that certain option contract entered into as of June 16, 1992, between the City of Lakewood and the owners of the Westland Mall, Westland Town Center. And Item 12, approving the minutes of City Council meetings of August 24, 2020, September 28th, 2020, and October 12th, 2020. All right, thank you, Mr. Clerk. Councilor Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to pull or move, if you will, item 11, ordinance 20-0, 2021 2 regarding the uh, sale of the Westland Town Center to general business, at which time I will explain the reason for doing this. Thank you. Thank you. So we will pull item 11. So now I will open up the uh, public comment portion for the resolutions, 21-3-4-5. Uh, uh, Mr. Rome, do we have anybody who would like to speak on the consent agenda? If you do wish to speak on the consent agenda, okay, looks like you're coming in. Hello? All right, caller ending in 5333. This is the consent agenda. If you'd like to speak, please give us your name and address or ward and we'll begin your three minutes. Sure, this is uh, Marie Venner in Ward 5. And um, thank you all for your service um, I, I really appreciate it. I can be very brief. Um, I am here to ask you to make sustainability work a serious priority for the city in 2021. Um, some of you know I had the privilege of accompanying high school students who organized and wanted to meet with the mayor and staff a few so years Ms. ago. Vetter, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to interrupt. So this is just public comment pertaining to the three resolutions, items three, four, and five, is this just a general public comment statement? It is, is this the wrong time? Yeah, unfortunately we're past general public comment. I was wondering why I wasn't uh, called on for that earlier. I, I've been here since the start. Okay, so Mr. Rome and I, there was only one hand up at that point and that was Mr. Mace. Oh, I'm just on the phone. Um, Certainly, and that's how we call on you with your hand up. Which okay, is I, I had done star nine uh, to to try to raise my hand. I think that's how I'm supposed to do it. Star but that's nine. okay. I, I've been waiting, but I can uh, this last hour. But I, I'll just put it in via um, email if if it's out of order at this point. I appreciate that. I, I try to keep this kind of even yeah, for course. everybody. And we have seen okay. some comments come through on Lake, which speaks about sustainability. And so okay. we certainly can weigh in and with the retreat coming up at his time. Yeah, I imagine there are others who yeah, encountered the same problem I did this evening, like uh, called in and did star nine to try to get in the queue uh, who also weren't called on. So just FYI. Thank you. 
Okay. Okay, thank you. And just for the record, there were only two callers in the queue. And again, Mr. Mace had his hand up. All right. So there's nobody else in the queue. I will close public comment on the consent agenda. I would like to turn it over to our, um, actually, that's not a motion. We'll do a motion in a second. And then the chair of our screening committee, if you'd like to weigh in on our three uh, resolutions would be fantastic. Mayor, I move for the acceptance of the minutes of the city council or all ordinances introduced on first reading, except for those pulled to general business, to be published in the Denver Post with public hearings set for the date included in the ordinance and for the adoption of resolutions, all of which are included in the consent agenda items introduced into the record by the city clerk. Second. All right, a motion is second, and forgive me, is Councillor Abel or Councillor Franks? Councillor Abel? Okay, sorry about that. Councillor Abel, you're on mute. There we go. First, I'd like to thank members of the uh, screening committee. Uh, Councilman Bita, Councilwoman Franks, Councilwoman Vincent, and Councilwoman Gutwein. Uh, we've all been together on the screening committee uh, again this year, and uh, I was fortunate enough to serve as uh, chairman. Soon we will be reorganizing the committee, and it will be someone else's turn. But we have had very cordial discussions, uh, very in-depth discussions about qualifications, and we have had in, in application after application, we've been impressed with the amount of knowledge, specialized knowledge also that our uh, uh, Lakewood community members possess. So uh, we have been able to add to the diversity of our committees and uh, it has been a pleasure working with you folks. And I want to thank you very much. You make it easy to be chairman and uh, whoever wants the, the reins next, believe me, uh, the membership makes it an easy job. With that said, uh, we are nominating in item number seven for the budget and audit committee, Marlon, McDaniel. You want me to run through the others in uh, LAC as well? Yeah, please do. Okay. For appointments and reappointments, uh, we have, uh, goodness, five reappointments for the Lakewood Advisory Commission. Uh, these folks do hard work, a lot of work, and they're very innovative folks. So we're renominating Roger Freeman. Andrea Getz, I'm sorry, Gail Fuso Getz, Robert Gerza, Kate and Kate McBride, uh, and Chris Rivard. A new uh, appointment will be, uh, if accepted by council, will be Diane Rhodes. All of them Lakewood residents, very eager and very uh, uh, interested in volunteering for our city. That's us, Mayor. Great, thank you very much. And um, uh, so we do have a motion and a second. And so um, let's take a vote and we'll give you a virtual kind of round of applause because we certainly appreciate your time and commitment and you're willing to serve on these important committees that are a, a critical part of what we do and allowing us to do our job. So motion and second on the resolutions. Um, please cast your votes. That looks like that passes 11 ayes and zero nays. So we would like to welcome you all and give you a virtual round of applause for your willingness to serve uh, your community. Thank you very much. That was kind of fun. Nice. Got to take the good stuff when you can. Okay. So Mr. Clerk, could you please read the next item in the record 
Yes, sir. Uh, item 13, resolution 2021-6, establishing residential dwelling unit allocations for 2021 and assigning allocation to pools pursuant to chapter 14.27 of the Lakewood Municipal Code. Thank you very much. I'll now open the public hearing. I will acknowledge that there were two comments that came in on um, Lakewood Speaks today. And there was a mention that this did come up to Lakewood Speaks um, a little bit later than the rest of the items. And that had to do with the calculations that came through at the end of the year. And so this was properly posted um, in our legal posting ways. And um, certainly uh, appreciate the folks for letting us know. I'm glad that we were able to get those folks' uh, comments. I will again, so this is public comment. Mr. Rome, is there anybody who wishes to speak? If you are on the phone, if you'd like to press star nine. No callers. No callers. Okay. So let me go ahead and Councillor Franks, do you have procedure or can I call in a motion a second for discussion? Okay. Mayor Pro Tem, can I have a motion, please? I move for the adoption of resolution 2021-6. Second. All right, motion and second. Councilor Franks, your hand is up. Thanks, Mayor Paul. Um, basically, what I'm going to be trying to understand tonight is uh, really just what I believe to be kind of the front end of the process, which is what should be, in my view, kind of the simple math. And so I'm hoping that staff can kind of, we, we got a staff memo that kind of had a lot of uh, paragraphs and a lot of information in it, but my plain understanding of it is that the ordinance calls for how it sets the starting number and then across the, since the ordinance has been passed, council has uh, done resolutions to decrement uh, in different years, different numbers. And so my understanding was it would be that starting number plus, plus those debits, um, and then that would be kind of the number that we're bucketing tonight. But that doesn't seem to line up with what I'm seeing in the staff memo, which kind of contemplates carryover um, uh, units, which I don't find that the ordinance uh, uh, contemplates. So I'm just hoping to kind of first take care of the math part of it before we kind of talk about the bucketing part of that. So that's kind of my hope for the, the evening. Great. Uh, Ms. Hodgson, is that something we want to address now? Is that something that we can? Yeah, I think that's a, this is a great time for Travis to explain the the way staff came up with the calculation. So that, that's a great segue for him to discuss that at the front. And of course, this is Travis Parker, our planning director. Great, so thank thanks, you. Mayor. Welcome, Mr. Parker. Good evening, how are you? Uh, so yeah, I can run through basically uh, staff's calculations in the memo in front of you and, and that resulted in the resolution. Uh, the simple number is the 701. That's laid out very clearly in the ordinance, uh, the calculation of existing number of uh, residential units in the city, 1% of that number is 701. So that's that's the base that we're starting with. Um, however, as you mentioned last year, there was uh, this whole issue around authority to continue. And council identified a year ago, January, 840 units that were granted authority to continue under the ordinance. Um, and the instruction that staff was given or, or the, instruction, the, the instructions that we walked away understanding were um, that we were to account for those units in such a way that the result of granting those units authority to continue would be no different than the result in, in if they all had to get allocations. So that Lakewood's not getting any more net units by granting them authority to continue than if they had all had to get allocations. That was our understanding. Um, so we first had to adjust that 840 unit based uh, 840 number based on changes that happened in the year. So obviously uh, a month or two ago, council granted a, a new project authority to continue, the White Friends Farm, that's 220 units. And there were then 105 of that original 840 that did not move forward. So taking 105 away from 840 and adding 222 to that, we ended up with 937 
units under authority to continue. Um, so these are not units that we want to account for to make sure that, that um, Lakewood doesn't end up with any more units uh, if they had all had to get allocated, then, then we would have if they all had to get allocations. So um, in 2020, there were 509 of the original units that could or should have been created at the beginning of the year that were never used, either not created by the by the council or not used over the course of the year. So that's 509 units that would have been assigned to these authority to continue if they had gotten allocations, but that were not used in 2020. So we took 937 minus that 529, that leaves 428 authority to continue units that still have to be accounted for, that still could not have been built under the system that required them to get allocations. So given uh, council direction to spread this over three years. We still have two more years to spread them out this year and in, in 2021 and also in 2022. So we took that 428, divide that, divided that out over the two years to take 214 units away per year from what you create. So 701 is our base number for this year. Taking 214 away from that is 487 for this year. And I do apologize, there was at one place in the staff memo that it said 480 instead of 487. I think the formulas were right, but the, you know, our paste and last minute numbers, I think the number ended up wrong, but it, it, it is correct in your um, resolution. And this would still leave us 214 units that we need to account for next year. Okay, so that gives us a baseline for the math um, Councillor Abel, or real quick, Councillor Abel, Councillor Franks, did you have a follow up to that? The only thing I wanted to, and uh, maybe uh, uh, Councillor Abel is going to speak to this, but I think the carryover. So, uh, Councillor Abel, I think maybe wants to, to speak to that part. But my understanding is the ordinance doesn't contemplate that, but I will defer to other speakers. Great. Okay. Councillor Abel. Thank you. Uh, my only issue with this is it requires us to carry over some allocations. According to the ordinance, the plain language of the ordinance for, in section 14.27.040 paragraph D, the language reads, uh, period of validity, allocations are only valid and can only be used from the date of issue through the last day of the allocation period for which they are issued, at which time they expire. The language is simple and clear. Uh, there is, there are a lot of sections in the uh, SGI that have some language that could be interpreted a number of ways. Uh, this is plain and direct. We can't carry any of these over. Uh, I have presented a uh, proposal for our planning retreat that we look at the uh, to revisit the legislative language of this ordinance and clear up some of the vagaries. And uh, but this is not vague. This is not uh, left to interpretation. It says. They expire at the end of the allocation period, which was, I believe, Mr. Parker, January 1st. Absolutely. I, I don't Thank think you. anything in our math. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. I, I, I don't think there's anything in our memo that's intended to carry anything forward. I believe there is. You're talking about adding allocations that have been awarded but not used even through authority to continue? It sure reads that way. Where are you coming up? We should have 701 new units, of uh, new allocations available next year. Where do the others come from? I, I don't understand the question. 701? 701, 701 units. Right, and we're, we're saying to take away- We're saying that 428 are being carried over through authority to continue. No, 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 quite the opposite. We're saying we have 428 that we still need to account for and not 
and not producing in this year. So, um, so without any authority to continue projects, without any of this discussion, we create 701 now. However, our instruction from council last year was we need to lower that number each year in order to account for those authority to continue projects. So right, we're amortizing uh, something in the neighborhood of 2,000 units, 2,800 units over three years. 937 units. 937 units over three years. Yep. And, and, and that stands. Right, and six and 509 of those can be accommodated in 2020 numbers. That leaves us 428 that we still need to accommodate in 2021 and 2022. So nothing's being carried over. We still have stuff that we need to lower this year and next year to to make sure we accommodate those those authority to continue projects. That's not the way I read your memo. We uh, we already made a, a uh, <clears throat> under 20 uh, ordinance 2028 a resolution 2020-8. We already compromised and made those numbers uh, a thing, and now we're being asked to change that. You're saying staff could or council could have last year done so and so, but we didn't do so and so. Instead, we passed 2008. So uh, it seems to me that we're carrying over some that shouldn't. The reduction is uh, much lower because we're using or should be much lower because we're using uh, expired allocations. Uh, I, I, yeah, I understand it. I, I, I'm not sure I follow. I mean, I, the, the number that we, we, we created eight or we council decided to accommodate 840 authority to continue projects in 2020 in, in the resolution a year ago, but that number has changed. That some of those weren't built, and council added some through the White Fence Farm project. So the number we need to accommodate through authority to continue has continue, changed since that. What wasn't built expired, according to 14.27.040 uh, paragraph D. No, I mean, it was not built and used this year yeah. in the allocation period. Whatever is left over at January 1st cannot um, or must expire. Now, Mr. Abel, we're not talking about projects that got allocations. We're talking about projects that didn't have to get allocations. Correct. Correct, Mayor, explain. So, Councillor Abel, Councillor Franks has her hand up. I'm going to go to her. Well, you just made a comment that was unexplained, Mayor. If you would explain why you said correct, I might be uh, persuaded. Uh, well, I think I think maybe I might be able, at least I think now I follow what was done. So I kind of, want, not that I agree with what was done. I'm just saying, I think I follow what was done. So, so Travis, I'm going to be looking for you to kind of nod if, if what I'm So basically the, the number that we have left to account for across the two years was the 937. The total number across three years. Total, to, total number. Um, and was that the total number that was remaining? Let's just say that the everything, let's just play devil's advocate, everything was consumed in 2020. Would then it be 937 that were remaining to be decremented equally across the next two years? No, 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 no. 937 would, would have been the correct number to assign in at the beginning of 2020. That was all the 840 plus the white fence farm and then dropping out those projects in the 840 that never got built so 937 is the number of housing units in lakewood that were that proceeded with authority to continue or will proceed with authority. so i guess where, where i would say i think that that potentially that I'm going to uh, need to see kind of the resolutions and kind of follow the paper trail. I'm not sure tonight is is the night. I guess now that I'm hearing all these different things, um, I want to follow the paper trail real closely to make sure that my vote, um, of course, uh, respects the, uh, the ordinance and certainly at this point, the way it was all put together. So 
I would feel more comfortable. We, we just need to have this done in January to push this to the next meeting. I can put in a request for all the kind of the paper trail that I think we would need to see in order for us all to be comfortable. I know everybody on council, we all want to follow the ordinance and do what's right. But I think kind of splitting this here and the way it was kind of munged together, I just don't think it, for me personally, it's clear enough, but certainly want to hear from others. I see other, uh, Charlie's hands gone back up, but I just think that we have time and we certainly want want to be respectful to all parties and make sure we get this right because in the future this should just be a rather routine process to get to the number and then the bucketing it shouldn't be this much churn because we shouldn't have this much um uh, again the ordinance doesn't give us a lot of flexibility on this point so um, i'll defer to others but i would be more comfortable to get my uh, paperwork in better order before i cast a vote thank you counselor mayor pro tem skilling Yeah, I agree with Councillor Franks and, and just a, a different view on this. Um, the, the bulk of what we should be discussing when this comes to us every January is where the out, what pools we're going to assign things to. Like that's where our night goes. That's where our debate happens. That's what we respond to. This number, whatever this number is, should be, uh, it's unequivocal, it's, it's un- you can't attack it anyway. It is the number. There is only one number. This isn't a subjective exercise. So if there are questions, which it sounds like there are, just need some more discussion and more, maybe look at some more things. We need to make counsel be unanimous on what this number is. Because going forward for the rest of the year, when we're dealing with SGI issues, I do not want to look back on tonight or any other night and say, well, see, we shouldn't have started with that disputed number. No. There is no, there, sh there cannot be a dispute on this number. It's just the math is whatever the math is. So let's get to that. Uh, Bar or Councillor Franks is correct in that, yes, uh, this has to be done in January. But if we need to uh, kick this to a later meeting so that this, uh, everyone's favorite term, the low-hanging fruit, is a 30-second conversation, and then the rest of our night is, would you like to put it in an open pool, affordable pool? That's where we should be spending our time. Thank you. And a point of clarification before I go to Councilors Beta, then Abel, do we have this read in as a motion a second? We do. So we would just need, yes, an we, we would need an amendment if somebody wanted to do that to move it to the next meeting. So we could do that and go forward. All right, Councilor Beta and then Councilor Abel. Thank you, Mayor. I'm in agreement with my co-counselors. This needs a little closer look, and I, I think it's best if we table it. That's all. Uh, Councillor Abel, is that something you want to do as a motion? Uh, firstly, I'd like to agree with my counselor, my fellow councilors. The uh, the numbers seem to be very confusing. And uh, we were looking at 300 or so uh, in resolution 2020-8, and this would increase that uh, significantly. So I would move that we table or postpone to a date certain this discussion uh, to uh, Three weeks since, two weeks since. What, one second, before we have a set, before somebody seconds that, um, so two things, does this have to be done in January? And if so, would that be January 24th? Probably, and it does have to be done in January. And I believe last year we did, pardon me, we did it on the 27th. It does, we, that's accurate. It has to be done in, in in January, and so we can move it to date certain of January 25th, which is a regular meeting. Okay. So we can do that. And while I have the floor, um, perhaps we can find a different and more clear way to describe the calculation so that it becomes kind of a template for every single year. Um, so people become familiar with the form and we can, uh, Travis and I'll work on 
how how can we better convey this information um, so that that'll be our template so we don't have to kind of wrestle with this um, at, at one, every year, once a year. So we'll, we'll see if we can come up with a way to make it more clear. I think I still have the floor and I agree with that. I do want to caution that what we do these next couple of years will be the anomaly because after that we will be uh, our amortization will be complete and we'll be down to a pure 1% number and that will be yielded through simple math. So uh, I understand Mr. Parker's, I think I understand Mr. Parker's point, not that I agree with it, but I think I understand where he's coming from. So I think that solution is, is very elegant, uh, Ms. Hodson, thank you. So I would move then that we <clears throat> delay consideration to a date certain of January 25. I second that motion. Thank you. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion on this motion? Councillor Johnson, your hand is up. Thank you. I just would like to thank Councillor um, Franks for bringing forth this discussion. You did it in a very elegant way, and I appreciate that. Doing this is the right thing to do to give us two more weeks to really understand this. It is very confusing and it really needs a little bit more thought and time. Thank you. Okay, motion and a second on the amended to move forward to the 25th. But Mr. Parker, were you raising your hand? Just, just as a follow up question, I, is there, is it just a matter of the format in which the information is provided or is there more information that we could provide that would help? Is there additional information that's requested. Councillor Franks, I'm going to, your hand is up. Um, so what I think I would be wanting to know is to uh, get the, any resolutions that we pass, decision outputs from that, um, handling of where we determined, you know, our numbers that we were going to divide. So when we did the first one, we said, well, we're going to divide this across three years. You have to just, if you show the paper trail, because once something for me has been put into a bucket, let's say the 2020 bucket, that's the bucket it's in. And so I just wanna be sure to be able to follow all of council's decision points, as well as our starting numbers. I think that would help as well. So probably pulling those resolutions um, and then any uh, of, of, of those, uh, cause I think they all went to resolution where we determined how we were gonna handle those. That probably concludes the paper trail for me. Councilor Abel. You're on mute, Counselor. You're still muted. As I was saying, uh, under cover of mute, uh, the, my only concern is the language. What counsel, this Mr. Parker's memo contains figures that are dependent upon the phrase what we could have done last year. We didn't do it last year. Perhaps we could have, perhaps we should have. We didn't. So let's look at the numbers more purely without the speculation of what could have been done. That's my concern. And I agree with everything else Ms. Franks asked for. All right. Thank you. Yep, so a motion and a second to move this to the 25th with more information. And certainly, you know, these folks are available uh, all the time in between if you'd like to try to get these answers also. So motion and a second on the amendment, please cast your votes. That passes, looks like 11 ayes, zero nays. Mayor Pro Tem, will you then um, make a motion? Oh, Ms. Hudson? Yeah, I just wanted to make a point that because we're outside of our normal submittal times you'll be getting this information just as quickly as we can but it won't be aligned with a packet for for the 25th because that was already due a while uh, a couple of days back so we'll get it to you as soon as we can so that you have advanced notice and you can review it but give us a please have some forgiveness there because we won't be able to make it in the right sequencing of submittals just want to make that point Thank you. 
All right, Mayor Pro Tem, can I now have a motion as amended, please? I move the. Um, so I guess it would be I move to postpone. Resolution, resolution 21-6 as amended to the date of uh, Jan January 25th. But Mr. Yeah. Graham, you are off mute. Did you want to weigh in? No, I was just waiting to be asked a question. Um, it, it doesn't really matter how you do it as long as it's very clear what we're doing. So um, if Mr. Skilling, so one way to do it would be to have the uh, motion in the second, um, you know, pulled back and then, and then move to uh, postpone the, the uh, resolution to the 25th. But I think this works just as well. And instead, I think Mr. Skilling's motion would, would be to amend his motion to include uh, discussing this again on the 26th. Because and then the motion would still be on the table, it would still be there and available to to do but if that's too confusing, it'd probably be best to just withdraw the motion and the second and redo it with a postponement to the 25th. 10 4, let's do that clean. So, Councilor Vincent. I, I withdraw my second. Okay. I withdraw the motion. Okay. All right. So, we've now withdrawn the. So, I move to postpone resolution 2021 6 to a date certain of January 25th. 2021. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I think we've discussed enough of this. So uh, please cast your votes. That passes 11 ayes, zero nay. Nays, I guess it's nays. All right, Mr. Clerk, could you please reread item 11 into the record under general business? Yes, sir. Item 11, Ordinance O 2021 2, authorizing the sale of the Westland Town Center parking lot in accordance with that certain option contract entered into as of June 16, 1992, between the city of Lakewood and the owners of the Westland Mall, Westland Town Center. All right, Councillor Johnson. Thank you, and I appreciate uh, your support in, um, in pulling this and moving this out of the previous vote. This is a very interesting situation. Um, the, those councillors in Ward 1 and uh, probably Ward 2 have received a great deal of community input. The community is certainly watching this. Um, there's, there is a great deal of nuances regarding the contracts that were written in 1992. And I would propose that uh, we go into an executive session in order for council to all understand some of the issues that are uh, needing some clarification with this. Um, there's one of them being that there's concern that a former council encumbered future councils. There's a lot for us to understand, to digest before we go forward. And, uh, and then we would again, of course, put it back on the schedule at the appropriate time. I just ask for your support of this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Uh, Councillor Johnson certainly would support that. And just, I, I would look for some clarification. So, so the idea is to postpone, but we probably don't have a date because we need to schedule an executive session. And then we would go forth with a first and second reading. So, Mr. Graham, um, I have a couple of councilors' hands up. I'd go to them, but if you could maybe think of some language that could get us there that Councilor Johnson could then propose. So, I'll go to uh, Councilor Abel and Councilor LeBeer. I just wanted to uh, 
clarify or get a clarification from Ms. Uh, John or Councilwoman Johnson that she's talking about an executive session for the purposes of legal advice? Yes, that is correct. Thank you. Councilor LeBeer. Yeah, I was just going to quickly support what Councilor Johnson's trying to do. I think it'd be good for everybody to have a refresher and to relook at, um, you know, all the different elements of this issue and uh, to look at the, the legal arguments pro and against and all that. So just be happy to support her. Thanks. Okay, Mr. Graham, could you maybe produce some or uh, help with some language? Essentially, we don't, I know we don't have a date because we're gonna have to do some scheduling. So we need to just, I guess, uh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but we don't have a date. I can tell you that. One, one option for you is to <clears throat> move to postpone um, this ordinance uh, 021 or 02020-2 uh, to the, if you want the um, regular council meeting uh, immediately following uh, an executive an executive session that will be scheduled for the the purpose of receiving legal advice on this matter. Okay. If you think that gives you enough time. Yeah, because it doesn't set into place an exact date, but it says after an executive session, the first regular meeting we will have. Well, it'll be rescheduled. So I guess, Councillor Johnson, if you want to take a shot at either restating that or just saying so moved for the record, <laughs> we can do that. It would be the easiest way, wouldn't it? Yeah. So let me take a shot at it, Greg. You said it very eloquently. Thank you. 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 Thank and then reschedule uh, to put this on the calendar for council after that executive session. So before, the, that, before there's a, please don't second. So okay. Councillor Johnson, it's it's actually 2021-2, not 2020-2. Thank you. Thank you. And if I, if I might clarify just a little bit, um, and this is absolutely up to you, council members, um, my suggestion would be to um, schedule first reading of the ordinance to the first regular council meeting following the executive session. It dawned on me, however, that that could be interpreted as the next council meeting two weeks after an executive session, or if you had an executive session prior to a regular council meeting that very day. So. I don't know if you want to do it a little bit differently. What you're saying is that we would have an executive session prior to a city council and then at that point go into the first reading for it. Is that correct? Yes, and you could do that on the same day if the executive session is scheduled for the same day as, as you would have that first reading. Whatever is the least cumbersome for the council and for our calendar, I'm open to whatever makes it easiest. And that would be fine. I'm happy to have a postponement or a continuation of 2021-2 to, to a future date to reschedule and have the first reading after the first or uh, first reading for the regular council fall following or prior to having our uh, executive meeting or executive okay so so let's let's pull let's pull this whole motion off the floor please so uh, councilor vincent if you could remove your second please do you want me to withdraw a second please yeah i withdraw my second all right councilor johnson if you wouldn't mind just withdrawing this motion just to be clean I withdraw the motion. Okay, so I'm going to go to Mayor Pro Tem real quick, and uh, he might have some language also, but... 
Well, we could have Councillor Johnson just, you could postpone uh, this ordinance to a date certain after we have an executive session and that date certain be at the reasonable, at some following, there's no reason to pigeonhole ourselves to that particular meeting. We can just say for purposes of tonight, we're postponing it to a date after we've had an executive session. I think that is probably sufficient for our purposes tonight. And that way we're not pigeonholed and find ourselves in a jam where we say, oh shoot, we can't actually do it then because of whatever. That does sound cleaner. Okay, let me try it again here, folks. I'd like to postpone 2021-2 to a date certain after we have an executive session regarding the Westland parkings, uh, parking lot issue. Hold off on a second. Does that pass the legal muster? Well, and it, it can't actually be to a date certain because if to, to postpone something to a date certain, you have to have a certain date. You have to <laughs> identify that specific date. Okay. So to just saying a date following an executive se uh, session would be just fine. Okay. Sorry. Hopefully the last time. Postpone 2021-2 to a date certain, excuse me, to a city council meeting after we have an executive session. Thank you, good, good. Right. Okay. Motion and a second. Councilor Vincent, please. Second. Okay. So we have a motion and a second, and uh, is there any questions or comments on this? Seeing none, please cast your votes. And it looks like that passes 11 ayes and zero nays. And I, I will certainly say, you, forgive me, I, I should have worked on the language. And so in the future, when we have these things and you bring them to our attention, I'll certainly make sure that we have an opportunity to produce some language so we don't have to do this on the fly. So thank you, Councillor Johnson. And I thought we did have it all figured out, but clearly we didn't, but we got to where we needed to be. All right, I have one thing under general business. So I wanna thank everybody for getting your proposals into for the retreat, which will be on the 30th. So the other thing that we need to try to tackle on the 24th is the ratification of council committees. And as you know, this can be a struggle because I certainly try to accommodate everybody's wishes. And uh, I think we've been able to do that pretty well. We've also had a concerted effort to spread our commitments equally around. And so that makes sure that council representation is mixed on all the different committees and can lend to rich conversation with the different voices of the elected body. And so what I'm struggling with, and I need your direction, is that going forward, how do you want me to do this? Do you want me to try to place in an equitable manner folks on committees or another way to make this happen? And this is an opportunity where I could use your feedback. And if you don't want to discuss that tonight, you can send me that. But I've on multiple occasions tried to find a way to address this and unfortunately i think this is really a council conversation so councillor abel your hand is up i agree mayor i think what we've done in the past is that ward mates consult with each other to see if they're satisfied with the current uh, uh, count, uh committee responsibilities and if not to let you know and if we do to let you know and I, I think that is uh, probably the best way to handle it. Council, Councilor Johnson and I have discussed this already. So uh, I, I think it is better to stay with what we're all comfortable with as opposed to selecting, uh, starting fresh out of the gate every year. Uh, this year we have no new council people. Next year, there will be an opportunity for council change uh, during the election and uh, after that uh, uh, then as you usually do after an election 
uh, you poll the new council people to see where they want to serve. And uh, I think you've had it right all this time. So why, why change what already works? Yep. Thank right. you. Thank you. Councillor Harrison. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, ditto on uh, Councillor Abel's comment. Um, Councillor Gutwein and I have talked and uh, uh, we would like to stay on our same committees if that is possible. Um, I think that, uh, you know, there is a wonderful thing about carrying over um, experience from one year to another. It is also very important for new councillors to get training. We're all kind of old horses right now. So I think that, you know, this year we ought to let you off the hook and just say, unless someone speaks loudly, quickly, just roll us over to our existing committees and we'll all be happy. However, I would encourage everybody on the council needs to participate on committee work, everyone. That's how the work gets shared and that's how we respond back to our um, constituents. So I would encourage that. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Franks. Thanks, Mayor Paul. I just wanted to echo what the others have said. Uh, uh, Councillor Skilling and I have already had our conversation. We have uh, shared with you that we want to stay on our current uh, committees. Um, but I did want to make sure that everyone knows that this is an opportunity for the leadership within those committees to change. So there is some opportunity within there. But Mayor, I think you've done a fair job. You've certainly done outreach. You know that I work full time. And so you've always been very cognizant and uh, worked with me. So I don't have any desire to make a change at this point. I think it's been done fair and equitably but i do want you to know that if you do find that you have uh, you know you need to reach out and with some some openings um i think that it may make sense to to do that in a way that is uh you know where the, our communities can kind of see that engagement and council we may want to discuss that i have had um community members um not know who was on which committee so they didn't know who to reach out to let's say that somebody had a, a head start question but they weren't sure which counselors and they didn't realize that there wasn't one counselor from each ward on that one that that's not how they're constructed and so i think it may make sense if the rest of council agrees and we might be able to discuss this uh, at some point in the future that we find a a web page that we can put up that shows all the committees and demonstrates like people would know uh, Councillor Franks is on the Housing Policy Commission and uh, Councillor Skilling is on Development Dialogue, for example, that way they can more efficiently route their questions and concerns. So th those are my comments, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Springsteen. Um, you know, I know, I know this is a, a difficult question. Um, I, just today put in a request for council action uh, for a resolution to establish an ad hoc council committee regarding police policy and accountability and to aid in the formation of a civilian review board. And that's the committee I would be interested in being part of. Uh, essentially, I've been on that committee, a committee of one for the past almost a year and um and it has been fairly overwhelming uh to the point where uh, i've barely been able to make a, a living to support my family um and so i think it would be nice if we could sort of ratify that that's an actual committee um with respect to the other committees and what happened last year i was i was my name was placed on committees without discussion or consent from me and i i, I don't really feel that that's a good way to go about things um unfortunately my ward mate um uh had a lot put on his shoulders because i simply didn't have the time to serve on all those other committees that I was placed on. Um, uh, you know, this is almost a voluntary, voluntary position. I mean, we get a little bit of pay, but um, it's basically voluntary. And so one of the questions I've always had is, 
why do we have so so many committees and why can't other citizens help with those committees and why does there need to be a counselor from every single ward on each committee and is there a way to uh to make it a little more um viable for people like me who uh is a single mom and i just don't i don't i just don't have the time for that and it has been a complaint of mine over this past year that um that there is not consideration for the needs of somebody who has certain um uh family constraints of that nature and case in point just like last year you have set uh the um annual retreat on a weekend that i'm not available i have my kids that weekend and so i don't understand why this continues uh to be an issue but um you know i think that there are other ways we can approach the committees without putting down the single mom because she's trying to put food on the table as i have felt you know has been kind of the attitude from frankly a lot of you all year like why aren't you pulling your weight but guess what i just had a meeting with representative herod and representative caraveo this morning for two hours trying to fix things with regard to ketamine so that the city of lakewood doesn't have so much liability so yeah i'm pulling my weight despite being a single mom but this system this system doesn't work and so i i don't know what to suggest is the answer other than i think we should be able to assign other citizens who are willing to help with these committees to um sort of shoulder some of that burden uh i mean in the alternative you could we could ask the citizens of lakewood to make these positions that we have a real uh paid position like we have in in like the city of denver where people don't have to work full time and still try to uh serve on council but you know barring that which i don't i don't think anybody has any intention to do anytime soon um we have to have some understanding about the different types of people who serve on council and and what we're capable of doing so i don't know the answer i'm sorry mayor but um i i just asked not to just be randomly assigned assigned to committees like i was last year and 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 i've given you the committee i'd like to be part of thanks thank you Councillor Bita, and then uh, Harrison, then Vincent. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just for the record, I'm satisfied with the assignments that I had last year and would like to continue with them uh, this year as well. And I think the system that we've used in the past, uh, where we kind of choose which committees we want and then you try to accommodate us the best you can, I think that's pretty much what we've done. And uh, it's worked well, at least for me, so I have no problem with it. I'd, I'd rather do that than change anything. Thank you. All right, Councilor Harrison, Vincent, then LeBeer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Councilor Springsteen, when you ran for council, there were a lot of things that were decide, you know, uh, described to you as what would be part of the job. Um, not only are you showing up for Monday night meetings, but you also have committee assignments. That's how we reach out to our people um, and that's how we, we serve the, the um, residents that we run for. Because you choose to have one particular issue that is your chosen issue does not mean we still don't need your participation on the other committees. You can run with the, the um, um, police issue and do whatever you wanna do with it. Um, but we do still need your participation on these other committees. 
I we have lots of people that have working jobs um, and they've figured out how to make it work. So I'm going to encourage you to figure out how to make it work and not put all of the burden on Mr. Beta. He's really supported you tremendously. And I would love to see that that would um, that you would um, step up and take a few more of the committees. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor and Council Harrison, I, I would encourage Excuse me, I think I have the floor. Councilor Vincent has the floor right now. I'm sorry, thank you. No. Um, yeah, I, I just like to say we all have, um, I know some of us have what I would call national interests and very global interests. And um, some may know that I have a real passion for historical goodbye, uh, preservation. Um, and I work on that at a state and kind of national level. Um, and I may be unaware, but I thought the only committee that you were assigned to last time was a judge's salary committee, which means meets once a year. Um, I know you were unable to attend that. So I didn't notice that there was a lot of um, personally back and forth about signing you to just random uh, committees. Um, it is a, it's a tough job, and we've had single people on this council before. Um, in, in point of fact, minority uh, single folks who were on multiple committees. So I really encourage you to join. I know it's difficult. I know you have a passion for things. Um, and the one that you want to be on is not a recognized committee. And I don't even think it can come forth as a resolution on the 25th, but I will let other people um, decide decide that. That's outside of my wheelhouse. So um, thank you. Thank you. Councilor LeBeer, then Councilor Springsteen. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, well, I just want to comment that, you know, I appreciate uh, the difficult situation that uh, you can be in and trying to get us all organized, <laughs> which could be a full-time job uh, in and of itself. So I just appreciate uh, you, you know, making any effort you can to, to make that happen in an equitable and, and positive way. And to Councillor Springsteen's point, I, you know, I certainly think the way we have our committee structured uh, is not monolithic and doesn't have to be the way that uh, it currently is. There's certainly room for improvement and change and opportunities uh, for that. We certainly don't always have to do it by ward. And, and I think since Councillor Springsteen also brought up the potentially creating another committee, uh, you know, it's important to think about any future committees that we are being sure that we're thinking about uh, how to distribute it. And, and we don't always have to do it by ward. You know, a lot of other cities do it all sorts of different ways. Sometimes it's, you know, uh, three, just three rep, uh, council members, not, not of any particular ward or, you know, there's there's a lot of other ways. I hate to use the term, but, you know, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat. Um, so I think, you know, it is worth considering, uh, you know, and I think from our committee chairs, you know, our, our committees, if there's an, uh, a committee that Councillor Springsteen might have an interest in. Perhaps there's a way to reform that uh, structure of the committee at a future date. You know, we have these council meetings every other Monday or every two Mondays uh, a month. It's probably not out of the realm of possibilities to restructure certain ones with a, an ordinance if there's some particular interest. I'm just throwing that out there and want to just mention that, you know, these things are changeable. We make changes all the time. Uh, and I'm happy to entertain those if, if there's some interest in the future. But anyway, just wanted to comment on that and and uh thanks for everything for everybody okay. councillor springsteen and councillor benson thank you councillor lipper uh you know i i mean that felt a little bit supportive um that we don't have to do everything the way we've always done it just because we've always done it that way and um uh you know, I've heard some flack on the judge's salary committee a couple times. Uh, I was not even made aware of when the meetings were. I did reach out at one point and try to find out and didn't really get much communication. And then everybody come, wants to come back around and give me a hard time about it after the fact when I have spent hours upon hours upon hours trying to 
deal with the ketamine issue in this city and save us from liability. We have a, a House bill, SB 2217, that our city is gonna have to comply with. We need to figure out how we're gonna meet new state laws and we're also gonna have federal laws coming down the pike uh, in terms of the same kind of issues as we get get a new administration. And so, um, you know, to just discount what I have been doing as unimportant where, as what everything you all have been doing is important, I don't, I don't think that's fair. And when I ran for office, what I knew was I had to serve on one committee. That's all the policies and procedures say. And, um, so I have done so. And um, I think it's unfortunate, speaking to what Councillor Johnson had said earlier, is that women aren't supporting women on this council and women's issues. And in fact, I got more support from the men on this council just now. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I don't understand this kind of attitude, but I hope that we can work together and figure out the best way through this. But I agree with Councillor LeBure that we can find solutions. We're smart people and um, we will do so. Thanks. Councillor Vincent, then Franks. Yeah, I just wanted to point out because there seems to be this, this um, this information or maybe disinformation that all representatives from all wards have to serve on these committees. And I don't know about all of them, but I know community corrections, a judge's salary, Head Start and Dr. Cog are served by one or maybe two counselors um, that have stepped up to that. So I just wanted to clear, make that clear for the constituents out there that not all of us have to be on every single committee. So thank you. Councilor Franks. Um, thanks, Mayor Paul, appreciate it. Um, well, first I wanted to, since we were on this topic, certainly make it clear to the community that for all these committees and commissions, we have a staff liaison and they're charged with kind of making sure that they do the outreach. Obviously, we're always looking to accommodate schedules the best that we can, they can. Um, uh, if for uh, example, the uh, judge's salary uh, committee, I do want to make sure that the community is aware that the staff liaison did do a, a multiple outreach um, to all of us, uh, did not hear back from everybody that was on the committee. So we did need to move forward in order to have that meeting. I was um, elected as the chair. It's a committee that meets one time per year. And um, I did want to acknowledge that Councillor Springsteen did reach out to staff, our staff liaison after the fact and asked about would there be a follow up meeting. Being the chair, I did outreach to Councillor Springsteen and never heard back. So I just want to, I'm not trying to, you know, I don't want this to be a thing, but I think it's important for our community to kind of have a sense of the fact that our staff is really working hard. COVID was a, a very difficult time, obviously getting, uh, getting everyone together and people had a lot of challenges uh, with, you know, maybe having to have children at home that they were homeschooling and all of that. And so uh, I know our staff was working really hard to accommodate schedules the best they can. And certainly uh, no one was not notified, but maybe did not see the invite. And then certainly uh, my outreach was done um, as I would expect any chair of any committee to do to make sure all the members were up to speed. So I just wanted to throw in those comments as well. Thank you. Okay, well, you've all helped me out tremendously. <laughs> uh, I appreciate all the comments. And, you know, here, at the end of the day, we're a body of 11. We're not a body of 10. And we're a part-time council. And, and if folks want to take that up as their passion play, they can go to the voters and, and do a charter change that institutes that. But right now, this is who we are. This is what we have. And it's important to all the folks that we represent that we participate as much as possible. I think this merits maybe a further conversation about our committees. Certainly everybody has been amenable to try to make 
things available to as many people as possible. Trying to schedule around kids in the morning, trying to schedule around full-time jobs, travel, those sorts of things. Um, unfortunately, it falls back on me. And, and um, as you can see, I get some of this criticism and I did actually put one member on one committee after there was uh, comments back. Now I've been asked to put somebody on a committee that doesn't even exist. And so certainly we can't do that. And so um, I will do my best based upon your feedback. I will also just state that, you know, things that were submitted tonight to Councillor Springsteen, there is a process and there are forms that these need to be submitted and it doesn't just appear at the next meeting because that's what you want. We've had to really set these norms and everybody plays by these rules and there has to be a buy-in to how we operate and that's through the policies and procedures. I tried desperately to make sure that everybody could be available. In fact, one person canceled a long scheduled vacation to be here on the 30th based off feedback, Councillor Springsteen, that you gave that said the 30th was doable. So I'm really sad to hear that this is not doable now, but this is set in stone. And this is a virtual meeting and hopefully that that can happen. I remember last year, we had tried to see if we could get childcare, tried to find any which way. I sent out an email saying, are there alternative dates during the week where some council members responded and said they could do it, but they'd have to take off work. So everybody is trying to work together and we need to really encourage you to do the same. What we do as a body is sanctioned. Work that you are doing on a passion outside of here is not work of this body. That's work that you are doing on your own and have not had buy-in from the group as a whole. And so I think it's really important to distinguish between your role as a council member and as a citizen. And so, you know, these are not easy conversations and I appreciate the folks weighing in and we have a lot of committees, but we've been trying to do a lot of work and we're gonna hear about that at the retreat. We may have to sacrifice a lot of our goals potentially in order for us to see us move forward because we have piled so much work on and we wanna be able to see us move forward with some meaningful stuff. So um, I will certainly do my best and I do believe firmly that this is a body of 11 and there were no hindrances about what we do prior to running for this office. And at the end of the day, we serve the people and they deserve to have their leaders representing them as much as possible, frankly. This is a very, very serious job and we deal with very serious things. And uh, I will echo that we have a very talented staff and it's not fair to say that you weren't invited because we've seen the emails and I've sent those out to ask you to say what happened and there's been no response. So to close and to get us out of here, those submittals, I will resend you the form. There's forms that we have for you to submit forms for council review and you can put those into that and then we'll try to get those scheduled. The goal was to have all of us submit these so we could discuss them on the 30th for our retreat. So I would encourage you to really look at doing that and see if you can make it on the 30th. That way we can address these at the retreat as a body. If not, they'll just be placed probably sometime in February, to be honest with you. And it will just be a place to see if council wants to go further to discuss those. And if you need some help getting those forms or understanding that process, I'm happy to help facilitate that, okay? Mayor Pro Tem Skilling? Yeah, just to reiterate that uh, prior to the planning session, we need to have, and I think we were trying to get them all in today. I suppose if they come in tomorrow or what have you, um, they will make it. Uh, what we're trying to do is get all of council priorities, and we've received quite a few. Um, we're trying to receive all of those and then those will be decided and whether that's forming a new committee whether it's an open space proposal whatever it is this is now the time that we need to do that if it's a if it's a big lift we just need to make sure that we get those forms in so that those can be discussed 
And I know that uh, that ha those have been coming in. And it sounds like um, Councilor Springsteen's, um, if they weren't submitted that way, that's the way that they would come in. Um, that if there are some, uh, some items, for example, starting a new committee, the appropriate way to handle that would be to complete the form and then that will be discussed at the uh, planning session. Thank you. And, and I, we did get a lot, I think 16 or 17 of them. So uh, council was very active in, in trying to get those through and I look forward to seeing them. I, I haven't seen them all and I look forward to seeing what people want to do as well as picking up our goals from 2020, which were kind of put on hold due to a little worldwide pandemic. All right. Well, thank you for that conversation. Uh, I appreciate it. Certainly not a delicate way to approach it, but important to uh, try to weigh in. And I will do those committees and we will ratify them on the 24th. And if folks don't like how that turned out, we'll again have that conversation. So I think we're at the point where we have council reports. Yes. So I'm gonna start with Ward 1 and we'll go up the scale. Councilors Johnson and Abel. Go ahead, Charlie. Mayor, um, the city managers uh, mentioned the passing of Ron Burns. Uh, it was very eloquent. In my career as a journalist, one of the things I enjoyed most was scrutinizing public officials. It often made public officials quite irritable with me. And at one time, a couple of former county officials uh, made veiled threats. And it concerned me. And, you know, I kept looking over my shoulder. Well, one afternoon, I looked over my shoulder, leaving the Lakewood Police Department. Ron Burns was there, and he put his hand on my shoulder and said, I've got your back. That's the kind of man Ron Burns was. Not only that, he was very ethical. We were, uh, city council at the time was discussing uh, a ban, possible ban on certain dog breeds, including pit bulls. Ron Burns was asked for his opinion and he declined to give an opinion because he owned a pit bull and could see clearly the conflict of interest. If we all had the kind of ethics and concern for our community members that Ron Byrne has or had, uh, this world would be a lot better place. Lakewood was certainly a lot better place for his participation in our community. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Councilor Johnson. Thank you. Well, I appreciate all of the honest conversation that we've had throughout the night. And I just want Councillor Mayor Pro Tem Skilling to know that I look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you. Ward two, Councillors uh, Vincent and LeBeer. You want me to go first, Council? Okay. Um, just a couple of quick things on a, on a nice note, there was a, a very lengthy article in the, I thought lengthy article in the Denver Post on Saturday about Dorothy Burke uh, from Lakewood, who has put together vets packages. Um, and she and another group of people have um, then distributed them. Um, it was a very, very nice article. In fact, it was on the inside and like I said, it was it was pretty lengthy about all the good work um, that she has done. And I don't know what word she is, but I just want to say um, I think it's important that we say kudos to our folks in the community who have been recognized. So that was that was wonderful on a not so good note. Um, <clears throat> and it bothers me. Um, St. Bernadette's Church somewhere between Friday night and Saturday morning was desecrated. It was horrible. Um, they are, I know the community has reached out 
to see if they could help clean it up. We have received uh, notice that they really didn't want any community help because of the harsh chemicals they have to use, um, both on the statues and um, the brick and the walls. Um, they uh, did not have cameras, but there has been a, a police, a fellow police officer, fellow, a police officer who has been assigned to this. And if anybody has ring video or any sort of video that has any information on this, um, you can send it to Josh Strommel, I think is how you pronounce his name, at 303-216-4135. And although it was a, a horrible, horrible thing, um, I'd like to thank the community members who reached out recognized how horrible this was and pulled together and reached out to the church to see in which ways they could help. So that's the end of my report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just wanted to comment. Uh, first of all, congratulations to our mayor pro tem again. Um, glad to, to see that you're going to be in there uh, for the next year. Um, I want to mention our ward meeting uh, is Wednesday. Uh, that's going to be at uh, its usual time. Uh, the email I know went out today and uh, we'll make some more posts about that. Uh, so looking forward to updating the community on what really uh, sort of an overview of what happened last year. Um, and then also I just want to comment on uh, what happened in the Capitol building. I, because I just think as community leaders, I think it's important, uh, you know, that we recognize uh, key moments in our country. And I just really want to strongly condemn, frankly, uh, the attack that occurred at the Capitol building. I think it's, um, you know, we should all feel ashamed really that uh, this kind of thing happens in our country uh against what i think is our government but more importantly our democracy and so i just wanted to comment on that i think it was a sad day in american history and um you know it's an important symbol of democracy and freedom around the world that was desecrated and i just want to strongly condemn those who participated and those who um encouraged it frankly so thanks thank you we're three counselors beat us springsteen uh, Councilor Springsteen, would you like to go first? You can go first. All right. All right. Well, just a couple of things. We are going to have our uh, resume our monthly uh, ward meetings, uh, town hall meetings on uh, Saturday, January 23rd, 9 o'clock. Be a virtual meeting. So those that are listening, uh, <clears throat> be, be uh, forewarned or something. Uh, we'll get that posted here um, maybe the, tomorrow or the next day. It's still a couple of weeks out. Um, it'll be an open meeting. We've discussed we're going to do an open meeting and give everybody a chance to kind of comment and catch up because we've, uh, of course, had not had our meetings for a couple of months because of the holidays. I um, also wanted to mention we had our food bank of the Rockies on on um, last Tuesday and uh, at the uh, Phillips United Methodist Church we had a great turnout. I think we we put out close to 500 um, uh, boxes for families. 500 families were served. Uh, this is a drive-up uh, event, and I want to thank the uh, Colorado Christian University teams that came out, volunteered, came out and helped us. We had the men's basketball team and the women's basketball team. I think they were competing with each other to see who could load the cars the fastest but they uh uh they got their work out that day they didn't have to go to practice so uh thank you to them and, and all the volunteers we had a, many many volunteers that come out and work really hard at that event so thanks a lot that's all well i you know i i i wanted to just go into again the request for council action that i put in uh today and i'm so sorry i mean if it wasn't on the right form or whatever but uh 
Um, you know, I've asked uh, for a resolution to establish an ad hoc council committee regarding police policy and accountability and to aid in the formation of a civilian review board. I have asked for um, uh, a resolution to establish a civilian review board or commission of police accountability for the city of Lakewood to review matters involving the police department. And that would be a citizen led uh, commission uh, separate from the city. And then I've asked for a resolution on the prohibition of the use of sedatives for law enforcement duties like they did in the city of Aurora. Now, what I wanna make clear is my intention is not to beat up on police. I, you know, I broke down in my car uh, on a highway with dangerous traffic a couple weeks ago and a, a, a state patrolman pulled up behind me, jumped out of his car without asking questions about his own safety asked if I was broken down and pushed me out of that dangerous situation. These people put their lives on the line every single day. And I am so appreciative of that as so many people are. But what I am asking for is to react to what has gone on in our nation and our community and to protect, you know, not just the citizens, but the police as well from, um, you know, bad policy, bad training, bad whatever it is. And so I, I think that this is an important thing for us to consider given the flow of how things have gone this year. And to that end, just to report on, um, you know, you know that the story of Colorado and ketamine was on 60 Minutes in early December. Uh, and I had talked to the producers on that and that uh, the grassroots law folks and I met with the governor's staff on December 21st. Uh, the Colorado Attorney General just a couple days ago opened a grand jury investigation on the death of Elijah McLean. And that investigation, I'm sure, is going to include other instances of um, use of ketamine in Colorado, as occurred here in Lakewood. And um, uh, my stakeholders meeting went, met with Representative Leslie Herod and Yadira Caraveo this morning, uh, and we're, we've been working diligently on legislation um, to, to try to address this issue. Now, you know, <laughs> uh, I see people rolling their eyes at me every time I talk about this, and... Uh, and um, belittling my efforts. And, um, you know, as the mayor just said, what, what is that, that we, uh, we have a serious job. Well, um, fighting for racial equality and civil rights in our city, I take pretty seriously. I think that's a serious job. Yes, I agree with that. And just because this, perhaps the council won't sanction that, that doesn't make it any less serious. And so I'm gonna keep pushing for that. And um, uh, I just wanted to correct one thing with regard to that January 30th um, uh, meeting that we're set for. I did not ever say I was available for that. I said months ago that it was possible I would be available, but we needed to look at other dates. Um, and uh, with respect to our ward meeting, um, I, I am wanting to do something uh, independent as well as our ward meeting that is uh, not overseen and controlled and recorded and um, completely controlled uh, by the city. And so I'm, I'm going to do some Zoom meetings where citizens can just talk to me about what their needs are, what, what is bothering them, um, 
how hard COVID has been on them and their businesses. And so I will get some dates and some, some Zoom times out for that shortly. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. All right, word four, what you got? Well, that put a little pressure on what you got. Um, first and foremost, I want to give a shout out to one of my favorite charities, the Action Center. Um, wanted to acknowledge that there are people in, in my community who uh, I think for the first time maybe in their lives needed to depend on them uh, for some food to get them through difficult times. So I certainly wanted to commend them for the work they've done for uh, more than 50 years in our community. And also, if you are, have the, the means and can contribute, certainly I'm sure cash donations and food donations are very welcome. So certainly wanted to uh, give that shout out. Also, um, since it was just mentioned, the annual meeting um, it is going to be through Zoom. So if those of you who have said, hey, I can't come over and sit with you all because I can't do that. You know what? We can be like a podcast in your ears. So you want to hear what's going on? Um, certainly, uh, we encourage you to uh, to do that. I wanted to thank Councillor LeBure for his comments um, and certainly make sure that the community is aware that there are resources. There are a lot of people struggling um, between COVID and um, the, the recent, uh, you know, attack on our capital, a lot of people, uh, mental health resources are available. So if you are finding yourself needing that type of support, be sure to reach out. Uh, that is certainly something that we want to encourage and, and everybody just take really good care of each other. Uh, we're, we're obviously, we, we're hoping for an easier start to 2021, but uh, we're going to be hoping that things do start to, to, to look up for us. So uh, thank you all and on to Councillor Skilling. Thank you, and I, I echo uh, both Councilor LeBure and uh, Councilor Franks, as well as what the mayor said at the top of the meeting. Um, you know, you can't, I don't think you can condemn it enough or, or too often that it needs to be reminded because those of us with smaller children struggle with, you know, they're just learning what government is, let alone how you could possibly comprehend what you just saw. So I think that that's important. I think what Council Beer said is very important that that needs to always be with us, that we're vigilant. And it allows us to sit here on a Zoom meeting for two and a half hours. Uh, we need to protect, protect our right to get together and uh, squabble with each other about things that when, you, when compared to those events seem uh, pretty unimportant. And uh, it seems what I'm about to say is also uh, unimportant uh, in that grand scheme, but in our group and in our city, I think it is important. And I will thank each of you uh, for your support in me in uh, the vote tonight. I especially want to thank uh, Councillor Gutwein. Um, we will be having, uh, I'm sure we'll be talking soon. Um, we will have some good conversations going forward. I, I can maybe predict who the next mayor pro tem is going to be, but um, we'll see. Um, and then uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Councillor Franks as well for her uh, kind words tonight. And thank you all uh, for being together tonight. And then one final thing, Councillor Springsteen on the, I didn't mean to be flippant about the form if you took it that way. I was merely trying to just make sure that since the forum that we're gonna talk about these 16, 17 items, whatever it is that everybody has, that I just want to make sure that your suggestions, however many there are, those are that's when we're going to discuss them. So I just want to make sure that nothing gets between the cracks. That that because that is the place where we will decide uh, whether or not some of these things are priorities for the council to then schedule them on an agenda. So I apologize if I uh, sounded flippant with the form. That was not my intent. Right. Thank you, Ward Five. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, so just a few things here. Um, I just wanted to let you all know that um, Jeff Coast Schools will be going back in, in person, or maybe I should say <laughs> that's the plan um, in about a week or so right after Martin Luther King Day. Um, and just, you know, kind of want to throw out to all the parents and all the teachers and all the students 
Um, you know, I, I feel uh, how hard this has been um, and just a huge thank you to everyone for, for making it work. Um, and then just so that everyone on council knows that that, that change is again coming to our community. Um, we will be having our ward meeting. I'll actually let Karen talk about, if you don't mind, Karen, um, our next ward meeting. Um, but we, we didn't have a January meeting due to the holiday. Um, also wanted to just talk about small businesses for just a moment um, and just throw out, you know, to anyone that is is able to shop at local businesses right now or support or I saw um, some information that was put out about you know write a review if you can or tell your friends if you can and I know it seems like such a small thing but um, for example we just ordered takeout the other night and we got this really beautiful letter from the owner of the business thanking us for for shopping there and how important um, that is to our business community. It's really just really really hard times. Um, so it's also obviously makes your life easier if you can not cook the meal or clean up the meal, but it, it does really make a big difference. Um, last thing, so some of y'all know that. Sometimes it takes me a minute to think through what I want to say about things. So I apologize for bringing up an issue that was closed a while ago, but I do just want to um, weigh in briefly on the issue about committees. Um, and I think everyone really raised some really great points. I think we do, you know, I just want to say I am open to if we can reduce the committee size and some committees to three counselors, um, I think that there, there's an opportunity to do that. Um, and so I just wanna say, I think that that's worth looking into. I do also believe it is really important to serve our community and, and be on the committees, um, but there are a lot so i think let's you know i think that's worth considering um and finally congratulations to counselor skilling and thank you for the the kind words um you know we we all deal with difficult issues and i think that we all try really to be respectful of each other and to Councillor Lebure's point, you know, it might seem like a small thing, but maybe it's not such a small thing. And maybe it really is a big deal. Um, so I guess truly the last thing is I do thank you, Councillor Lebure, for raising that. Um, it was really upsetting to watch, and I just want to echo what you said and, and join you in condemning those actions. Um, and. Yeah, I think, I think it is a big deal when we treat each other with respect. And I think that the words we use really matter. So thank you. Um, that is all. Thank you. Um, I would say congratulations to uh, Pro Mayor Pro Tem Skilling. I think that's great. You've done a great job last year and I'm looking forward to seeing that you'll continue that hard work again for this year. Um, Dana, I want to be your campaign leader for your uh, mayor pro tem race for next year. So uh, I'll just put you on those. I can't vote for you next year, but I get to be your campaign uh, chairman on that. So I think you would have done a dynamite job. Thank you so much uh, for uh, the choices that you made. I think um, an anonymous and that unanimous vote is very important. So thank you for that. Coming up for our meeting for Ward 5, um, we're going to have a, a, a meeting on, and we're hoping that a lot of people will tune in, um, two different topics. The first is uh, safety tips on how to keep your home safe. Um, things like uh, uh, we've talked about, you know, kind of... Uh, how to make your doorways really strong and so people couldn't 
um, break through them. Uh, looking at the landscaping around your home to make sure that you could see people, uh, you know, action lights that would come on immediately the minute somebody walks by. Some things along that line to where people, because we've been spending a lot more time in our homes, trying to help people feel really safe and secure in their homes. So we're going to have that as half of the topic. And the other topic you guys are going to give to us, and that is we're going to report back to our ward on what we talked about at retreat. Um, so we'll come loaded with one and, uh, and we'll actually come, uh, you'll give us the topics for the other half. So um, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Okay, so I have a quick couple quick things. So as you know, we're in orange right now, which is good. Our numbers are going back up. And so I imagine that has to do with the Christmas holiday and New Year's. Um, we are hopefully getting close to, to getting to five star level, I hope, which will then allow us to maybe be on the yellow phase. So operate a little bit lower. On a call with the governor last week and just can't stress enough that we're not out of the woods by any means and certainly a fear of, of what's to come. So we have to really encourage folks to do their part, to be smart, to be safe. Um, frankly, our businesses can't sustain another shutdown. It's just, it's not a reality. They won't, they won't make it through. And so we have to do everything we can and really lead in this capacity, which is hard because there's a lot of stuff that, you know, people are looking to us for right now on a lot of different levels. So, just want to really encourage that shout out to our healthcare workers. I know that um, they're, they're stressed and um, <clears throat> trying to get the rollout for vaccinations. I know Ms. Hodson has sent some things out. Jefferson County Department of Public Health has a lot of information as to the different layers and um, certainly want to try to see those get out as fast as possible. Saw a statistic today, I think Israel is almost at 20% and granted they're country of 7 million people, but that just goes to show, you know, the faster we can do this and get these out and get people vaccinated, the better. <clears throat> really cool thing, speaking about our police department, you know, a couple uh, months ago, you passed the law enforcement assisted diversion grant, which our PD spearheaded and uh, got a call from folks in Canada and in British Columbia who want to know more about this program. And so they are convening about 80 elected officials in British Columbia and have offered our community action team to come and talk about this great program. And so it's really cool. And um, one of the comments I got was a lot of times our neighbors to the north kind of look to us and say, we don't need your advice on these things. But yet they they learned and they've seen and they have you know some of their own issues that we face. So really excited about that. Agent Lowe is going to head up that group to present on behalf of our police department, and uh, just goes to show again how recognized these folks are for what they do and what um, kind of the progressive thinking that they have for trying to help people. A couple of things I want to throw out for 2021 just to keep in mind. And it has been delayed a little bit. The census is supposed to be brought to the president on December 31st. A little bit of a delay, you can probably imagine. But once those numbers are released, you will see some things. There will certainly be redistricting on all the levels. And that could include the city of Lakewood. And so that could be another committee that you may see, maybe not this year, but maybe next year, to address redistricting in the city, if so warranted. I was around last time we did have to do that, but I think we were able to pretty much keep, I think we kept them about whole. I don't know how, but uh, the clerk was able to maneuver that. So the other thing also, and what I picked up on last meeting is, you know, we talk in generalities, like we all know what these different plans are, like Colfax 2040. For somebody who does not, involved with Colfax a lot that may be foreign to you. So on the planning page, you'll see all of our plans. And so if you ever have a question, they're all on there. And in fact, even archived are old, old neighborhood plans that used to be part of that, that were rolled in. So when in doubt, check that out. I know you have a lot of spare time. 
check that out. But there's a lot of information in those plans that can help you get up to speed. And um, two final things in closing, uh, certainly Dana, I think I had the opportunity to nominate you as mayor pro tem some time ago and that did not work out and certainly stand by that. I, I thought you were ready then and certainly think you are ready now and, and you've done an incredible job and it's not easy either time to have to go through what we went through. The first time was challenging and tonight was certainly challenging. And I see people looking because I think maybe she did drop off, but she can tune back in. Um, but I, I am proud of her and she handled tonight with great grace. And as one of the members said, really showed, you know, the merits of leadership. So thank you for that, Mayor Pro Tem. Again, you've been a great person to work with and I've learned a lot from you over this last year. And I thank you for that. Councilor Goodwin, I just said a bunch of mean things about you when you were off. And now you're back. I so have internet problem. Surprise! I'm back. So you'll just have to go back, but that's okay. And then, and then, just in in final closing thoughts. And many have spoke to it. And it's hard to find the words, right? I think as leaders, you are always looking. What do I say? How do I say it? Especially when you watched what unfolded last week in shock. And uh, I was in this office and reached out to Kathy and just said, I don't even know what to say. And, you know, it's through our actions of coming together and continuing to work. And, you know, for some, and for me, I'm still angry, right? And one of the visual things that's burned in my head is the Confederate flag running through the rotunda of our nation's capital. And to hear Cory Booker talk about that as an African-American senator and how hard and challenging and, and just to see that so many different emotions on so many different levels. So 2020 was tough. We thought 2021 was going to give us a break. It's going to be a little bit more challenging, but it's what can divide us is the same thing that will unite us. And so that's where we have to find the middle ground, not the not the outliers on either side. There's the middle folks, the majority, the people that really can come together. And we have a choice right now, a fork in the road to either soak up what we've seen and decide and say, we're not gonna go down that road anymore. We're gonna make that change and, and move forward. Or we can just not soak it up and continue to do the same thing and live in the same cycle of dysfunction and, and I have great hope that we're going to take that turn and we're going to we're going to move forward for the good and so thank you to all and um, it's amazing to see the forethought and the while very imperfect our forefathers and what they created have withstood some challenging things and I think many thought that we might have seen the end coming and it stood right through. And so we got to continue to stand that up and carry on with what they gave us. So thank you for listening to me. And again, I thank you all for your comments tonight. Ms. Hodson, do you have anything? Um, only, I just wanted to congratulate the mayor pro tem and I look forward to working with you for another year. So congratulations, Dave. All right, Mr. Clerk, are you still with us? Oh, yes, there he is. Okay. Anything I'm here. from your office? No, nothing for me. Thank okay. you. All right. And Mr. Graham, anything from the attorney's office? Okay. All right. Well, we are off next week and we'll honor uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. So um, I know that there's some folks trying to do some kind of service projects out there. AmeriCorps is. So if you have the opportunity to do uh, something in day of service to honor an incredible leader, that'd be great. And then we'll be back on the 25th. And then again, the retreat on the 30th. So we will adjourn this meeting at 9.45 p.m. Thank you all very much. Have a good one.